Hey there guys, welcome to another new video from Mile High Distilling. And today we have been graciously gifted an actual still recipe kit from Still in the Clear. Great YouTube channel, uh, great website, check him out. We're going to be going over one of his very simple, thorough recipe kits. He makes a lot of them, very thorough guy. And look at all the instructions we're going to get. We're going to pull this on the screen for you so we can go over them in a closer detail. But you know, we're going to get a bunch of stuff here. We're going to get um, sort of a little voucher, which will talk, get you some free stuff, from promotional stuff up front here. You can subscribe to his new letter and get a new recipe every other week. So already giving you some good value. And then as far as the recipe kits go, we're going to have full instructions on our recipe. We're going to have a PPG chart, which is going to tell us how much grains you want to add to get the right ABV which you can look at. There's a full sheet on liquid enzymes and their uses. And there's also calculating that PPG, as well as a guide on the oak sticks. So this is all included with the packet. Now we do recommend reading these thoroughly before you start the kit. Um, it's gonna include a lot of useful information for you. Just, just read out and it, it should be thorough enough to get you in the right track. Um, before we start, and actually get ourselves going. Let's go ahead and pull up those charts on screen. We're gonna go over them in a little more detail. We'll be right back. All right guys, so here's what comes with the instructions list. Step one is heating four gallons of water to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll obviously want a pot large enough to hold all that water. Step two is stirring in the ground corn. You wanna go small amounts to avoid dough balls. Make sure you have a spoon or a mixer available and just maintain that at 190 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour and a half to stir continuously. Now step three is turning off the heat, adding in the malted barley and wheat, and again, watching out for dough balls, keep stirring. Step four, we're gonna add in the alpha amylase, and we're gonna stir that in well, and we're gonna let it sit for one hours, one hour, and stir every 20 minutes. Uh, you can do an iodine test, um, it's something if you have the available equipment, I would. Step five is adding in two gallons of cold water. That's the cool down, cold crash. Step six is uh, cooling everything down to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and then adding in the glucoamylase. Stir that in well and let rest for three hours. And then your final step is getting your starting gravity reading and pitching your yeast. So yeast of your choice and allow that to ferment for about seven days. The second chart we're gonna get is a typical PPG chart, and that's basically going to be our points per pound per gallon chart. We're gonna explain a little bit more about that. What that is, is an efficiency rating. So with grains, you can't ever get 100% of the sugars of the grain out. You're always left with a little bit from starch, and so what this chart will do is let you know kind of what you're supposed to be at in terms of how much efficiency the grains do. And you can correlate that with an ABV or a starting gravity. We're also including a, cal a calculation chart for your PPG. So for that, there's three simple steps. What we're gonna do is multiply the PPG of each grain by the number of pounds used. Our PPG max for corn is 39. We probably won't get our full conversion because you never really do. Let's say it's at 30. Well, if we do 8.5 times 30, we're going to get 255 for our first number. And you can kind of see how that goes along. You're going to finish that with all your grains. And then your step two is going to be totaling the calculations of each of those PPGs for all the grains. So that's 255 plus 46.5 plus 62. We end up with 363.5. And then we're going to divide that total by the number of gallons of water in the recipe. So if you followed the recipe to the T, we should have a PPG of 60.58. Now we can round that to the nearest whole number, 61, and that can be 61 gravity points. Now that means our original gravity is going to be at 1.061. If everything's said and done right, that's going to be about 9-8% naturally. Now we're also going to have a liquid enzymes guide. These are going to provide a little more of an explanation on what enzymes actually do and for this specific recipe how they're going to work. 
So as most of you probably know, liquid enzymes convert the starches into sugars so they can actually be fermented. Now, you need both because they attack different bonds of starch. So our alpha will take care of most of our conversion, but we bring the gluco in to eliminate the endo strains of that, of that dextrin bond for full conversion. Now, if you do this right, he's quoting 100% conversion. High temp alpha amylase works with corn the best because it's high temp. And the way corn works, it needs to be at about 190 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's the best to uh, have the corn get the full conversion. So one of the key factors to making good starch conversion is complete gelatinization, and that's why what will happen is we'll get a nice, good, thick consistency. And as we stir, add our alpha. Now as things begin to break down, we'll then let everything cool, and that's where our gluco will come in. So we'll get full conversion by attacking different bonds of starch at different temperatures. Now last, we have the oak stick aging guide. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, but there's a few really good notes in here. Because one thing that can happen is you can over oak, and this guide is going to help prevent that. Now it's, it's recommended you let the oak sticks actually soak in water for about three hours prior to use on your distillate. And as, as far as the steps goes, he's going to give you a basic guide of how much to use. So we're talking about about one stick per quart, one to two sticks per half gallon, and up to three to five sticks per gallon. You completely submerge those, close your jar, and take a note of that date you put everything in, keeping a cool, dry place away from sunlight. Um, step two, of course, you're going to let your spirit actually color and age. Now, he's quoting eight weeks. Um, I recommend every week taking a sample. It can happen pretty fast, at least in my experience. So, you know, whatever you'd prefer to do um, until you're at your desired color and taste, really. Now, step three is, you know, after eight weeks or the weeks you feel is good enough for you, you're going to sample that spirit using a syringe, a turkey baster. And when you're ready, um, go ahead and let that jar out. Go ahead and get the jar off and basically let all the volatiles and everything, a chance to evaporate. That's going to take about 12 hours. Now let's talk about what's in this kit. So we're going to get eight and a half pounds of ground corn, one and a half pounds of malted barley, two pounds of malted white wheat. We get a gluco and an alpha amylase liquid enzyme. And we get two sticks of the medium charred oak. We're starting our very first step on the seven step guide. It's all very simple, each step. This one is just going to be playing a waiting game. We're gonna have some sort of boiler vessel that can hold at least five gallons, preferably up to eight. And then we're just gonna heat that up. We're gonna turn it into water. It's gonna have to be about a 190 degrees Fahrenheit before we proceed to the next step. So we're gonna wait. We're gonna come back here and I'm going to guess probably 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and we'll get started on step two. And step two is pouring in our maize. So small little pieces. You're going to see our boil go down. You kind of stir as you're putting it in if possible. Not a crucial step, but it'll help avoid those clumps. And we also have to be careful. This is going to have to be stirred pretty vigorously and kept a good eye on. Because if we burn those grains, that's kind of it for us. There's really not a way to recover from burnt grains. Your recipe is just kind of done at that point. So we'll stir here. Make sure, feel for any clumps. Make sure we're not going to have any of those. And then... We're going to try to keep a pretty close eye on this. I'm going to say every few minutes, I'm going to come back here. I recommend if you have the time, just stay here. We've been going for 90 minutes here. Let's go ahead and take this off the boil. And let's add our other grains. Now we're going to notice here, especially that corn has absorbed a lot of the liquid. I'm down, started at about here worth of corn, I'd say, and I'm probably down about here. So. I've lost quite a bit, which is normal, as the, the corn kind of is a porous thing. And now we're going to add our other grains. 
And that's going to help gelatinize the solution. It's going to liquefy it and just get it easier to stir. Right now, it's especially in this little plastic spoon I have, it's definitely a little bit of a workout. So let's let these go in here, small clumps to avoid, small portions to avoid any clumps. And let's stir this in for just a tiny bit before my next grain. Second grain. Give that a quick stir as well. And any clumps you're gonna see, go ahead and remove. This is still a pretty gelatinous solution, but it smells great. And as soon as we add these enzymes, within 30 seconds of stirring, we should be seeing pretty dramatic increase. In goes our 15 milliliters of our alpha. And pretty much instantaneously, that's become easier to stir. So, good sign. Now our grains are nice and homogenized, kind of together. And now it's as simple as, we're going to let this go for about an hour. We're going to check back after 20 minutes, give it a quick stir. It's off the heat. There's zero risk of scorching. So, let it do its thing. Come back every 20 minutes and make sure everything is going smoothly before we go to our final steps. Okay guys, we're actually next day here. We tried to stay, but around closing time, and we were still at about 160 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. So we decided um, instead, instead of uh, putting in the cold water, we just let it cool down overnight and it worked almost perfect. We got here this morning, we were at about 100 after we stirred. And now we're down to 90. So we're skipping step four, which would be adding two gallons of cold water. Um, we just did it naturally. Sorry for messing up, botching the recipe. But we're going to go into step five, which is adding these glu this glucose. Mm -hmm. 10 milliliters worth. We're going to let this sit for three hours. So we're going to come back in three hours. And then I reckon what we're going to do is, since we didn't use our cold water, We'll let this sit for three hours and we have to cool down to about 70 for our yeast. So we're going to use a whiskey yeast and uh, it's going to be about 70. So we're going to pour in our cold water then. That should be get us right around 70 and we'll just pitch our yeast right there. So messing up our recipe a little bit, follow your instructions as they are and sorry for the ears. All right, so we've done the allotted 90 minutes on that GA, that gluco. Now we're going to take our chilled water that should have been at step four and we're going to dial down and try to cold crash a little bit. This is at 90 degrees and we're trying to get it down to 70 for our yeast. This usually comes with a daddy yeast which has a higher alcohol content. Um, we wanted to just explore a little bit, have a little bit of fun and I want to see how this whiskey yeast designed for whiskey actually does on this just to see that flavor profile. Now that dropped us about 75, almost perfect. I think we're just gonna go ahead and pitch our yeast now. We're, let's go ahead and take a hydrometer reading, get our starting gravity, probably put it in this bucket and then we'll pitch our yeast. Look at that color. I'm gonna to try to bring this a little bit closer, but it looks like I'm only getting about 8%. So it looks like we're at about 1.062. Now, if you guys remember, we were doing a PPG guide during the beginning of this, and with that calculation, we were quoting almost exactly that. I think it might be on the dot that. So everything worked 
as I'm assuming it should, I'm getting about 8% alcohol by volume content. This can obviously be bumped up with sugar. If you wanted to increase that, I'd recommend, I would say about eight pounds worth, I think would do pretty well. Um, we are not gonna be adding sugar. We're gonna be keeping it all natural. And let's go ahead and pitch our yeast and get everything in a bucket and ready to start fermenting. Now I'm sure you guys can see this on camera. We're gonna be sitting pretty high up on terms of a liquid level. Those grains are gonna increase our gravity so when we remove them, we'll get a little bit less. But I always like to ferment on the grain if I can. Um, it just, I think, adds to that more flavor and all those sugars are gonna sit in there and kind of soak during the fermentation. Typically, we have a uh, straining clamps around my bucket kind of holding my basket in place. Now we'll just pitch our yeast. Remember, sprinkle on top. Get that thing nice and oxygenated, oxygenized, whatever, whatever, whatever the right word is. You want oxygen to flow through the bucket. That's all. Everything's had a pretty nice stern here. So we're just gonna let this sit at seven days. We're just gonna do our thing. And we will report back in a future video with how everything turned out and hopefully we'll be filming the whole process where we're still working on that thank you guys for your patience i'm still trying to figure out kind of that that gray area um so thank you all for your patience thank you guys for watching and i hope you enjoyed